Good morning. This is a blessed day. Congratulations, class of 2018. <laughs> Reverend Van Hook can't be here today. His daughter is also graduating from her master's program at Tuskegee, Alabama. So I'm going to be your mistress of ceremonies today. My name is Meredith Brown, and I'm the president of the Board of Trustees for the Peralta Community College District. We have a prayer warrior and a leader here in Reverend Sylvester Rutledge, who will lead us in the invocation before we begin the celebration of your educational achievement and your self-determination. Somebody says that we only have one day at a time. I want you to know it's only one heartbeat at a time. Sometimes the only time we got is right now. And so we want to thank God who we are breathing his air. And it is he that have made us and not we ourselves. 
and to you who have come this far off of Mama's prayers. Daddy might not be what you think he ought to be to you, but you be to your children what your daddy wasn't to me. Mama might not have been all that, but she could have aborted you. And yet, she said, I want to give somebody another chance. So when we pray this morning, we ought to think back from the past. Anytime you see a turtle on a pole, he didn't get up there by himself. Somebody helped him up there. So all the teachers and all of the students and counselors and all the people who encouraged you after you got to be more than 21. And I want to leave with you wherever you go that you can do all things through the maker who strengthens you. And then there's a saying of the lock, later Dr. Martin, late Dr. Martin Luther King, whatever your vision is for yourself and your family, the church and the community, that I ain't gonna let nobody. Y'all don't forgot already? That's why you're here. Because you decided that you weren't going to let nobody turn you around. So I say congratulations. <laughs> oh, God, our help in ages past. And you are our hope for years to come. Before you made the mountains, before you made the animals, and you said in your counsel, let us make man. Thank you, God, for letting us know that we are not monkeys. Thank you, God, for allowing us to know that you have been from everlasting to everlasting, because you're God. And you're God alone. You know our beginning, and you also know our end. And then we thank you for those who worked in politics from Oakland to Sacramento, from California to Washington, D.C. Help us not to forget that it is you who have brought us this far. God, we thank you for Mama. Lord, we thank you for Daddy. We thank you for Grandmama. We thank you for Auntie. Then we thank you for friends who had a vision that one day we would achieve. Lord, thank you for those who organized to bring us back to the church and help us to know that the church is not the building. And you've told us in your word, one of these days, you're going to gather your people from every nation. They're in Oakland. They're in San Francisco. They're all over America. And most of all, we thank you for Jesus. Some people call him the man upstairs. He is God man. And without him, we can never see the Father. Sacrificed his life for us. And then, Lord, allow us to live a life that brings honor to Mama. Allow us to live a life that brings honor to daddy. 
Allow us to live a life that brings honors to you. And thank you for those who come before us. Now, we say unto you who's able to keep us from falling. And in spite of ourselves, you're going to present us to the Father faultless with exceeding joy. And we say to the all-wise God, our Savior, Jesus, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And the people of God said, like to begin this ceremony and we would like to ask for permission from one of our elders to begin. Is there an elder in the house? May we m have your name please ma'am. My name is Charlene Cobbs. I'm 94 years old and I want to say good morning to everybody, especially the graduates. My granddaughter is Tonisha Cobbs, and she's graduating today, and I, I'm, I'm happy to thank all of the graduates today. May God bless each every one of you, and make you, may keep on with your career. And, and, and I, I wanna thank you. Do we have your permission, ma'am, to commence the ceremony? Uh, do I have what? Do we have your permission to begin the ceremony? Uh, yes, you all may. <laughs> so I'm just going to make a little confession. Um, I, I was uh, advised that I would be the MC not too long ago. And I grew up in Texas in a very small church, smaller than this, that was very hot in the summertime. And my seven-year-old self still wants to pull off this robe and go get a snow cone. So I'm going to try my best to behave myself so my grandfather doesn't come in here with his spirit and smack me in the back of the head. <laughs> but if you see me flinch, you'll know that I did not do as I should, and Poppy is in this church with us. So the next thing that we are going to do is go straight to our, um, we have actually Elihu Harris who began this uh, commencement <laughs> exercise. So I'm going to beg your indulgence, and Mr. Harris, of course, we know what a warrior he is. Um, we're gonna, uh, you, you see my trustee in the back here telling me what to do, so y'all. So we're, we're gonna kinda cut ahead because Mr. Harris has, a, of course, another place to be because he is everywhere doing everything in service to his community. So we're gonna have trustee Linda Handy introduce Mr. Harris, and then we're going to have the keynote speak, the speech, and then we're going to go back through the rest of the program. Is that okay with everybody? All right. Hello, everyone. My God, do you know how beautiful you look? Do you know how beautiful you look? Give yourself a hand, please. Okay. Hey, I'm here to in introduce a person who really requires no introduction. Elihu Mason Harris is a private attorney and represents clients in education, recycling, manufacturing, housing development, and automobile repair. He's also a member of the trustees at Patton University, National Commission on Uniform State Laws, and Executive Committee of the California State NAACP. He finished his master's degree in public administration from the University of California, Berkeley, and completed his doctorate of law degree from the University of California in Davis. Elihu has served as executive director of the National Bar Association of Private Law Practice, California Assemblyman, Mayor of Oakland, California, member of the Federal Home Loan Bank Board, member of the State of California Un Unemployment Insurance Appeals Board, and Chancellor of the Peralta Community Colleges. I first met Elihu when I was a student at Laney College, and we were at a frat party, and he was back there, and I was like, what kind of name is Elihu? 
and it always stuck in my mind. What you don't know about Elihu is he is the heart of this city. He is no longer at Peralta, but he is always watching Peralta. Your best interest, your education, and providing the best for you, he makes sure that we are on top of absolutely every opportunity that we could bring to California, I mean to Peralta, to offer you students so that your lives and the lives of all of you and your families will be enriched by your experience and your education. So without further ado, I want to bring to you Elihu Harris. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Rutledge, to Dr. Reverend Van Hook, other Reverend clergy, to uh, the trustees of the Peralta Community College, Chancellor McGeer, to President Burns, and any other persons who are here who ought to be recognized and acknowledged, and most importantly, to the graduates of the Peralta Community Colleges and their families, today is your day. Take pride in what you've achieved. Take pride in what you've achieved. You know, this is the day where we sometimes sit and think about what we've done. And we say, well, some people graduate with a summa cum laude, some with a magna cum laude, and some with a thank you laude. And as, they, and as they say, you know who you are. But whatever the circumstances of your graduation and your completion, this marks an important day in your journey, a day in which you not only reflect upon your past, but hopefully focus on your future. You know, this is, we're at a church. Remind me of a story of two little boys who were sitting in church on a Sunday, and they were fidgeting with each other. One was about seven, the other was about nine. And during the service, the pastor was giving his sermon. And the little boys were playing with each other. He stopped in the middle of the sermon and said, y'all stop that. You know how to act in church. And so they stopped for a minute, and the pastor went on with his sermon. After church, he saw them, and he said, look, I want both of y'all in my office tomorrow morning. Be there at 9 o'clock. So 9 o'clock, the little boys got on their bikes and rode down to the church. And the pastor told the oldest one who was 9 years old, you come into my office, I want to see you first. Brought the little 9-year-old boy in the office, looked at him in the eye and said, where is God? The little boy looked at him and didn't have an answer. He asked him again, where is God? The little boy was even more confounded and confused. He said, this is the last time I'm going to ask you, where is God? The little boy jumped up, went out, grabbed his little brother, started running down the street. <laughs> Told his little brother, they done lost God and they tried to blame us. <laughs> but I want to assure you this morning, God is not lost. The question is, are you lost? That's what we're here to talk about this morning. The subject is empowering our community through knowledge. The first thing you've got to define is, what is your community? You know, we've been all kind of things. We've been colored. We've been Negroes, African Americans, black. Now in the 21st century, a lot of just confused. We don't know who we are. We don't know what we're about. Maybe more important, we don't know where we're going. In 1967, Dr. Martin Luther King thought he'd accomplished a lot. Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, and he wrote a book. Where are we going? Chaos or community? Fifty years later, after his assassination, we still are asking ourselves that question. Where are we going? Chaos or community? We recently had a lecture at the Catholic Church in downtown. And Danny Glover was our speaker. And Danny Glover asked a question. He said, I'm working on a movie in San Francisco. He said, the movie is called The Last Black Man in San Francisco. The question he asked is, will the sequel be in Oakland? And in many ways, that's up to you. 
If we're going to continue to have a community in the city, and over the last 30 years, the black population of Oakland has dropped in half. Because we're no longer living in the city that Mr. Christ we created. We're living in Antioch, Martinez, Sacramento, and Tracy. The jobs are here, we're living out there. Talked about getting duped. We sold our home because we get you a newer, bigger house in the suburbs. Unfortunately, the jobs aren't there, but you're going to be commuting three hours to get to work. You don't have to do that. You got an education. Stay here, build this city, make it what it ought to be. We all know the Oakland schools aren't what they ought to be. But you know what? Whose fault is that? It's our fault. These are our children. These are our schools. These are our community. Get people on the school board. Get people teaching in the schools. Get administrators in the schools who will care about our children. And more importantly, you care about them more than the teachers, the administrators, and the school board. Yeah. You know, knowledge brings power. But you know what else it brings? It brings responsibility. Because now you know better. When you take a bite of the apple, and in the Garden of Eden, the apple was knowledge, you got to wear the fig leaf. You know too much to play ignorant. If you know how important knowledge is, don't deny it to others. We don't have to worry about where we came from. All we got to worry about is where we're going. <coughs> there was a, a story about Vietnam. If you haven't been to Vietnam, and I have, there's all these little Vespers, little motorcycles, people riding around, millions of them. When you cross the street, you have to be afraid because those Vespers are going real fast and you're worried about getting hit. And they tell you, don't worry about getting hit. You just walk straight across the street and the Vespers will, will, will get around you because they know where they're going. You don't. And they said, look, why don't these little Vespers have uh, rear view mirrors? And they said, well, they don't need rear view mirrors. They don't have to worry about what's behind them. They only got to worry about what's in front of them. And that's what I want you to do. Worry about what's in front of you. You know about our history, we've been enslaved. You know about our circumstances, we've been impoverished. You know, we've been denied the right to vote. We've been denied knowledge. We've been denied all kinds of things. But you know what? If we're not going to be denied in the future, it's because we demand justice. We demand equality. We fight for ourselves. We fight for each other. We don't fight with each other like we've done so often in the past. This is a graduation for African Americans. And the thing that defines us is not only our links here in Oakland, or around the Bay Area, or California, or even across the United States, with all of the various parts of this country. It's our link with Africa. Africa is our roots. Africa is a place that not only has a proud heritage, but it's a place that needs us to relate to them. They've got the natural resources. They've got the history. If we've got knowledge, don't let the Chinese be the only place to go there with engineers and lawyers and doctors for health care. We need to go back to our heritage, our homeland, and bring that knowledge and that strength and make sure that people in this country respect Africa the way they do China and Japan and Europe and all the other places in the country where people recognize their heritage. <laughs> Chinese people don't ask us to respect them. They demand it. When you go to Beijing, Donald Trump going to Beijing like he runs it or owns it. Donald Trump goes there and says, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. He understands that they're not playing. He plays with us, but he doesn't play with them. You know, the other thing I would tell you to do is don't compromise about your people. You know, one thing I love about the Jewish community, they will not compromise about Israel or other Jews. We will always compromise about black people in Africa, and we got to stop it now. We got to stop compromising when it comes to our community and for our people.
So I would suggest to you, today is the day for celebration, but also for reflection. We've got to get on with the revolution, not an armed revolution with guns, but a revolution of minds, minds that are committed to common goals and common aspirations for the future of our children. You know how you got here. And you have to understand something more important than anything else. The future is up to you. Fannie Lou Hamer, one of the great civil rights leaders from Mississippi, once told this story about an older woman in her community. And in that community, she was known for having the answer to every question. Some young people came up to her and they said, you know, we're going to fool her. She thinks she's so damn smart. Excuse damn, Pastor. We're going to teach her that she don't know everything. We're going to go up to her, and we're going to have a bird in our hand. We're going to ask her if the bird is alive or dead. And if she says it's alive, we'll crush it in our hands. If she says it's dead, we will let it go free. In either case, she'll be wrong, and she won't know that she, she'll understand she does not know as much as she thought that she did. So then they went up to her and said, oh, woman, oh, woman. We got a bird in our hand. Is that bird alive or is it dead? She looked at each other squarely in the eyes and she said, it's in your hands. It's in your hands. And today, graduates 2018 throughout the colleges, the future of our community and our world is in your hands. The question is, what will you do with it? Will you empower our community with knowledge or will you turn your back like so many others have in the past? It's in your hands. Thank you, Elihu Harris. Thank you for beginning the African American graduation ceremony process 10 years ago. Thank you for your unrelenting support of our community and your love for our community. So we're going to now have, I'm going to wear two hats. I'm supposed to, as the president of the board, do a, just a quick talk about the occasion. Then we're going to have uh, Dr. Siri Brown do our greetings and introductions and then we're going to go to the Pioneer Awards. And where is Dr. Brown? Oh, there she is right there. We could do the greetings now and then we'll do the uh, occasion. Whew. Class of 2018, look at you. You look good today. Clap yourselves up. Audience, clap this class up. It took them two years, three years, four years, five years, six. It doesn't matter. They're here today. They're graduating today. Today is the day to celebrate all of the accomplishments of the class of 2018. I am very honored today to be standing here representing our chancellor, Dr. Joelle Laguerre, who's unable to be here with us but has been here every year that he's been with us in the district and sends you a great congratulations, one of pride and honor. Today is a very special day because every single graduate sitting here in this audience today has a story to tell. Some of you are the first ones to go to college in your family, but you made it. Some of you have struggled through every kind of system, from the welfare system, to the incarceration system, to the foster care system, to every kind of system that was trying to hold you down and hold you back, but you made it. Some of you had people telling you that you would not make it, because very few people ever encourage a black child. They don't tell us that we're intelligent and brilliant. They don't tell us that we're going to be a doctor and a lawyer. People don't tell us this. As a matter of fact, they tell us that we are ignorant, that we are dumb, and you have disproved that every single day you went to class, every class you passed, right up until this day, right here today, where you have graduated. 
the honor you bring to our community, the honor you bring to your family, to your friends, to people who don't even know you is tremendous. I don't know if you know how important this is, that what you have done has transformed the future generations of your family line, encouraged your neighbors and friends. It's done so much to please your ancestors who could not do what you were able to do. You might come from a family who did not understand that. And it doesn't matter now. Let it go, let it go, let it go. What was done to you is not you. You define who you are, and you have defined who you are as a brilliant, intelligent, beautiful African person. I know you confused because you think you ain't African. You African! And that comes from a place of pride, our ancestry. Up here on the stage today, I'm honored to introduce you because along the way you get to meet so many amazing faculty. Think about for a moment the teachers that you had that impacted you, that taught you. Think about the ones that you couldn't stand. <laughs> but you gotta thank them too, because they taught you. Think about that math classes that you took so many classes and you made it. In those English classes, in those science classes, you made it. Think about everything you have been to to get to this moment and be proud of yourselves and be humble and be grateful and be filled with so much gratitude that along the way so many people assisted you and helped you. There are people sitting on the stage that helped you and you have no idea that they did it. You don't even know. Behind the scenes, there are so many dedicated classified professionals. Our custodians, our administrative assistants, our, I mean, we hit on and on and on and on. They work every single day and they do it. Listen, I have to tell you, everybody who works in the Peralta Colleges could get a job in all kind of other places. They're there because they want to be a part of your journey and your path of success. Even the ones that it didn't seem like it. <laughs> On this stage, everyone here is very dedicated, um, and I want to introduce just um, quickly um, who I can. First, I want the faculty that are here on the stage to stand, please. They're here representing all of the faculty. You have tens and tens and hundreds of faculty. You know that there are many along your path that couldn't be here today, but we thank the teachers. God bless the teachers. I also want to introduce, and the counselors. <laughs> can the counselors stand up? CJ, Miss Rose, can you stand up? And Carlos, and represent the, uh, see, they won't listen to me, because I'm, would you stand up, Miss Rose, and, and Carlos, representing the counselors. So many counselors around the district. Derek Ross, right here, dedicated counselor to the students. On and on and on and on, they work tirelessly. I'm telling you, I see it behind the scenes. I also want to um, introduce you to, or reintroduce you to, and thank our Board of Trustees members that are in attendance today. Trustee Riley, if he could stand. Long time, long time, dedicated to Peralta. Trustee Handy, if she could stand. Long time, dedicated to our students and to our Peralta community. Uh, the President of the, trust, of the Board of Trustees, Meredith Brown. A soldier fighting for you. And also, where's, where's Trustee Weinstein? Trustee Weinstein. Trustee Weinstein, our trustee. Thank you for all her hard work behind the scenes as well. And, um, and also, our college presidents. We have an amazing team of leaders in Peralta. You don't always see them, but then, of course, you also do see them around campus. But they are working tirelessly, 60, 70 hours a week um, for, on behalf of you. And so I want to acknowledge, oh, let's see who's here the loudest, which college. I want to introduce, let's see, let's see. You, you go. Okay, whatever. The president of Merritt College, Dr. Maria Lane Burns, if you can stand. Is Merritt College in the house? Okay, okay, all right, we heard you. And the president of Laney College, Dr. Tamil Gilkerson, if she can stay. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh, Merritt, I think there's some competition. 
and the president of the College of Alameda, Dr. Tim Karras. What's up? Hey, COA, COA. And the president of Berkeley City College, the Berkeley City College, Dr. Roman, Rowena Tomanang. I don't know who won, it doesn't matter because we're all one community. We're all one people. With one God, one aim, and one destiny, as Marcus Messiah Garvey said. I'm honored to be a part of this wonderful staff administration and classified uh, professionals, um, and mostly honored uh, to be here with you all to see this moment. And again, please carry forth this message that education liberates. It liberates you. It's not just the great job and profession that you'll be able to do, but it has liberated your mind, taken off the shackles. And you need to share that. Our people need education and training. And not everybody thinks that they can do it, just like you might have had some times and you thought you couldn't do it. Please encourage, 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 and know that if there are children in your family, which means there are, because whether you have children in your biological family, your love family, in your community, there are so many children. Don't just rely on the school system. Be that teacher. We are the first teachers for our children. Sit down and share what you know so that we can empower ourselves and take ourselves to the level of righteousness from which we came from our mother continent, the beauty of Africa. Congratulations to the class of 2018. We celebrate you and honor you. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a little greeting from the Board of Trustees. And I just wanna say that we are here out of love. It's not a paid position, it's not a faculty position, it's not a, it's, it's a position that's from community members that really love education. And as Siri Brown said, as Dr. Brown said, education is liberation. And we're here because our education, we want to put into the liberation of our community, the liberation of your mind, and the ability to free your creativity and your talent to come together to form whatever your destiny is for the betterment of mankind and for all of us here. Martin Luther King Jr. has said that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. We have been through our educational process that has not been easy, but it has been well worth the fight. When we give ourselves to love of mankind and community, we make our, and we make our purpose, service to others, and love, we promote justice. What we are talking about here is social justice, your education, your liberation, your power to promote and uplift what is good in this world and what is good in our community. Your graduation today is the harvest of a collective sacrifice made by love of yourself because you had to love yourself to push yourself to get here today. Your family, your community, your ancestors, the love, the collective love. But we all know that we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us and it's through God's love and your persistence that we are here today. And we want to celebrate that. That is the liberation, freeing yourself for the possibility of what you can accomplish. And right now we are, cele we are celebrating, celebrating the harvest of your sacrifice and the sacrifice of those who came before you. So I ask you today to be true to that calling that you have in your heart, that which motivates you, that which is selfless. Be true to that. That it will carry us from generation to generation. We don't always know what will be, but we know we have to try, and we know we have to strive, and we know that that is what our truth is, and that is justice, being able to be yourself, being able to be your true and higher self and radiate the divinity that is within each of you. That is what brings us forward. So I ask you today to be transcendent to rise above whatever it is that stands in your path and do so for the love of yourself, for the love of your community, for the love of mankind, and persist and walk through life with love and justice. 
education equals liberation. Congratulations again to the class of 2018. So we have the Pioneer Awards. Do we have the Pioneer Awards recipient for Dr. Lawrence Van Hook? Dr. Evans. Do we have Dr. Evans in the house? Ah, there she goes. So the Reverend Dr. Lawrence E. Van Hook is a huge personality. And he is, has been with this program, this African American graduation program since its inception. Dr. Evans, would you like to say some words regarding Dr. Van Hook? Congratulations, 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 congratulations. Oh my goodness. Uh, Pastor and Dr. Uh, Van Hook is out of town and I'm standing in in his place. Um, but his spirit and his soul is here with us today and is here with you today. And the one thing that he's, his biggest proponent is education. If there's anybody who loves education, it's him. And the reason why is because it offers liberation and liberation offers options, choices, opportunities, a whole new world of opportunity that you get with your education. So I just encourage you today uh, that you continue to trust God, because you're going to need him on your journey, that you continue to trust each other, because you're not going to make it to the next level without the people next to you, and that you continue to trust the process, because everybody's process was different. You guys had a journey to get here, right? So continue to trust that process and trust that it will lead to where you're supposed to be. Thank you. We are presenting to Dr. Van Hook the award that states to Reverend Dr. Lawrence Van Hook with deep appreciation for 10 years of distinguished leadership and dedication to Peralta College's African, African American graduation. Thank you. Our next Pioneer Award recipient is Ms. Rose Allen. Good afternoon, class of 2018. This is really an, this is really an honor. I have the privilege of being able to introduce and present a woman, a colleague, a counselor, an educator who has done more to change lives than a lot of people I know. She's a first generation college student. She's the sixth of seven children in her family. She works tirelessly and more important, she works with all of us. She works with her colleagues. She spends time. She makes sure that she's on top of everything. And when it comes time to graduate, we know. And I've heard over and over, Miss Allen, Miss Allen, Miss Allen. <laughs> Miss Allen has changed Merritt College. She has brought so much to the college and to EOPS. And so it is my pleasure again to introduce a pioneer who is also the co-chair of this committee for the African African American graduation, Ms. Rose Allen. <laughs> and so I'm gonna see, here's what she got. And it says, to C.J. Rose Allen, in sincere appreciation for your dedication, commitment, and contributions to the success of Peralta College students and the African African American graduation 2018. 
Thank you very much. It's really an honor to, and uh, a little uncomfortable to be acknowledged, but I appreciate it very much. And I just want to say that it's an honor to do this work. Not to say it isn't hard work, but it's an honor. It's awesome to watch all of you transform your lives, go beyond where you thought you could go, and reach for things that are really challenging to get to. So thank you for the opportunity to work with you. And keep pushing. Don't stop. Keep going to school, keep pushing, keep getting more, keep bringing somebody along with you. And thank you, and congratulations. Tola, don't go too far now. She's got to introduce the student speaker. You guys see all this love here for you. You are amazing, and we do love you, and we do have high hopes for your continued success. Happy to introduce to you our uh, student speaker for the African American 10th Annual Graduation. And I first met Gerald Robinson when he was in elementary school, Grass Valley Elementary School, you know where that is. And my kids were at, my two sons were at the same school. And then uh, we all went different ways and directions and uh, he came to Merritt College and immediately got involved as a student and became the president of the Black Student Union. Hey! And representing that long tradition from Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale and Merritt College's legacy around student engagement and organization, Gerald Robinson has led the BSU for over two years now. And I have to tell you, I was so impressed, and still am, because when uh, we would have meetings, he would really run these meetings powerfully. And he would recruit students all over the campus. Well, one time uh, last spring, I think it was, or spring before, two years ago, I was ill and I was out for a couple weeks. And I came back and the size of the BSU had tripled. And I was like, Gerald, what are you doing? He's this master organizer. He connects with young people, he brings them in and empowers them with the fact that when we collectively come together to address issues that, that we can achieve. In the BSU, he and the BSU members have gone to high schools to do uh, trainings for students on what to do when you're stopped by the police. Uh, they've fed the homeless. They've done all kinds of community activities. And so I'm honored to introduce one of your very own who was just, by the way, accepted to Morehouse College in Atlanta. That's how we do it because he's on his way. Please give a round of applause for Gerald Robinson, your student speaker. How y'all doing today? I couldn't leave without teaching y'all something. I got the lesson today. I'm saying the lesson in my speech. Good afternoon, my name is Gerald Robinson. As she said, I'm the president of the Black Student Union. And first and foremost, I want to say congratulations to all our black grads of Peralta. Congratulations to everybody. Y'all did that. Y'all really did. I also want to say thank you to a lot of key staff members that helped us, well, especially at Mary College, too. I want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Ross, Sankofa counselor. Thank you to the whole Sankofa department. That played a big role. I want to say thank you to Brother Jason Seals of the African American Studies Department. Dr. Brown, and I want to say thank you to Ms. Allen. All of you guys were so much help for me. You guys really made me, you guys actually made me like school, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know what I was doing when I first came to uh, Peralta. You guys made me gain that vision. First, I want to talk about how I have an expectation for every graduate today. Every graduate, and that is to evolutionize the black community through buying black, banking black, and educating black. Listen, we spent $1.3 trillion to the U.S. economy last year. Just think about that number. $1.3 trillion to an economy and a government that was never built to support us. Think about the justice $1.3 trillion would do to our community if we kept it there and circulated that dollar. We would need no community assistance and we'd be a self-sustaining people as we once were. The number that scares me the most is that we spend $2 billion on Jordans a year. We own zero stock in Nike or Jordan. 
We are the face of the worldwide entertainment industry. We own zero distribution companies, zero sports teams, and zero recording studios. We need, well, I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> we making them wealthier and wealthier by the second while we just out here trying to get a check. Yes, we becoming richer and richer as a people, with, with, but what does that truly mean when we own no wealth? Nothing. It means nothing at all. Did you know the uh, wealth gap between blacks and whites tri tripled from 1984 to 2009, and it went from $85,000 to $236,500? Y'all know it would take 228 years for us to catch up with the average white family? All while they got that same 228 years to gain more wealth. For, look, I got the numbers for y'all right here. <laughs> for each dollar increase in the black household from 1984 to 2009, we just saw just $0.69 cents an additional increase of wealth compared to $5.19 in the white household. As Jackson Jackson once said, we fought to get to the front of the bus. Now we got to fight to own that bus. I'm going to take it even a step further. I'm going to say we can't just own the bus. We got to own wherever that bus is taking us. Uh. And I'm going to put it up to you. Education is the key. We got to use education to open doors for one another, one another. So you can own that bank. You can own that hospital. And you can own the education institutions. And we can teach what we want. Uh. And don't move away after that. I mean, we'll be moving away once we get some money. We got to stay and eventually, eventually create our own currency system and really display the full, the full visions of what our ancestors had at Black Wall Street so we can truly get out of Trump America and own our own communities. Everybody in this room today, everybody has a job, not just the graduates, but especially the graduates, and that's to educate somebody that looks just like you. And, in, and after your next journey, when you come back with that doctors and with that masters, Share that with the community as well. I guess, to be honest, what I'm trying to say is don't stop because you got this degree. If, if you feel accomplished, it's okay to feel accomplished, but don't stop. We don't have time to be content. We still playing catch up. <laughs> we got to do all these things I just talked about with a real sense of urgency. You feel me? We can't let our foot off that gas. Remember. You can jail a revolutionary, but you can't jail a revolution. Thank you. Good morning, graduates. Woo! We have an especial we have a special award this morning for um, Pastor Rutledge who has for 10 years allowed us to use his sanctuary for this wonderful occasion. And so um, we have this beautiful award for you, sir. Reverend Sylvester Rutledge and the North Oakland Missionary Baptist Church in sincere appreciation for 10 years of support to the Peralta Colleges. Thank you, Pastor Rutledge, for your generosity of spirit, for your hard work, for your dedication, and for welcoming this graduation ceremony. This is a sermon. Your success is a sermon. And thank you, Pastor Rutledge, for making this sermon possible. All right, y'all, we're at the end of the program. You know what that means. We're about to celebrate the graduation. Now, some of you are going to go on to transfer to places like Morehouse and Cal, UC Berkeley or UC Davis or Cal State. Some of you are going to work for a little while and then keep going. But all of you have made it and graduated, so thank you and congratulations. The class of 2018, I want you to please listen carefully.
for how we're going to do this. Class of 2018, please rise. <laughs> Class of 2018, where your tassel is on the right, please move it as a graduate to, oh, where it's on the left, please move it to the right. I hope I'm right. Give him a round of applause. Mm -hmm. 